we agreed last night and before that there will be common ground, that we were fine. And he loved this city, and so do I. During the election, you throw some mud back and forth, but I'll tell you one thing. People, uh, people expect us to work together, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll work together, and, and uh, we're going to find common ground uh, when we sit down, because she's uh, actually quite a nice person. The morning after progressive Olivia Chow won Toronto's mayoral race, the newly elected mayor and Ontario's premier, as you heard there, are striking a tone that is markedly different from just a few days ago. Have a listen. I'll tell you, if you, you want my opinion, uh, if Olivia Chow gets in, it'll be unmitigated disaster. Uh, taxes are going to go up 25 to 30 percent when people can't afford the rent, can't afford mortgages now. Um, you know, businesses are going to be fleeing Toronto as far as I'm concerned. So how will that relationship play out as the campaign dust settles? Let's bring back, or bring in, rather, the front bench. With me this evening, former New Brunswick Liberal Premier Brian Gallant. He's the CEO of Space Canada, former Conservative Deputy Leader Lisa Raitt. She's the Vice Chair and Managing Director of Global Investment Banking at CIBC. CTV News political analyst and former NDP leader Tom Mulcair is with us, as is the Toronto Star's Queen's Park Bureau Chief Rob Benzi. Hi, everyone. Great to see you. Rob, I'll start with you. Boy, did the dust ever settle. What a change in just a, a few days from a, an unmitigated disaster to, uh, to a very nice person. Not surprising given the brand, the sort of unique political brand of Ontario's Premier, but do you anticipate they will actually be working together? I mean, they're going to have to, Vashi. Uh, I, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. They are known to each other, known commodities. Um, interestingly enough, for, uh, Premier, the Premier's uh, late brother, Rob Ford, who was the mayor of Toronto, was w really revered uh, Olivia Chow's late husband, Jack Layton, the former NDP leader. They were city councillors together, and, and it was Mayor Ford who led the charge to name the ferry terminal here at, in Toronto after Jack Layton. And so there is a kind of a, a, an interesting history there um, and a closeness on that front. They're politically different people, but I think uh, I would take a step back and, and look at Premier Ford, how he has worked closely with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Liberals, whether it's on the pandemic or on EV battery uh, factory uh, subsidies or uh, child care or health care, they worked closely together because they had to. And uh, the Premier said today, Ontarians expect them to work together, Torontonians expect them to work together. And Olivia Chow uh, said basically the same thing. There are going to be differences. There's a huge hole in the Toronto budget. They have differences about the future of Ontario Place, which is a, a waterfront park here in Toronto that, that is a source of some contention. But I think that they will have to find common ground uh, because, it, because the same people who voted for Doug Ford voted for Olivia Chow and also voted for uh, Justin Trudeau. So there's a, an interesting kind of trifecta. If you have a, a Tory uh, premier, a liberal prime minister and a new democratic mayor. I also find, Tom, the speed with which uh, the Premier this morning changed his tune on Olivia Chow kind of emblematic of the evolution at, at Queen's Park, right? It took a while for the Prime Minister and the Premier to not be political rivals and to talk about their cooperation in a public-facing way quite frequently. It looks like Doug Ford sees the advantage of doing that even sooner in this case. Absolutely. His words were a little bit over the top. It was just a bit too hot. And he wound up backing a candidate that finished a very distant third. So all sorts of supputations and calculations could be made. What, have, what would have happened if he had gone with another candidate? The important thing is that Olivia Chow has tons of experience. Now, that experience has almost always been in opposition, whether it was in, at City Hall or in Ottawa. So it's going to be different when all of a sudden, instead of being the one saying, this is an outrage. Somebody ought to do something. People are going to be saying that to her. And she's going to say, oh, it's up to me to do that now. So she needs allies. She also needs to talk to the people in the party who right now are feeling fantastic. She's got a very progressive agenda that she will be doing. She's got a certain number of things, starting with housing, that are on her list, and she's going to get to them. But the other thing is, too, it's almost a blessing for her that it's not the full mandate. Because she gets to calm the ardors of some parts of the NDP base that have gotten her in there. Because, of course, it's City Hall. It's different. It's not only NDPers, but it's all the progressive forces, the non-government organizations, the environmental groups, the social groups. They're all part and parcel of the coalition she put together to take City Hall. She's got to deliver, but at the same time, controlling their ardor might make it easier for her to go and get a full mandate at the next election. She's done super well. I know her personally. She's incredibly hardworking. 
very disciplined. Yeah, you, I've rarely met anybody who works this hard. And I think she's going to do a great job if given half the chance. And Doug Ford, I think, is doing just that, saying, okay, we got to get stuff done together. Let's do it. It will be fascinating, Lisa, because the expectations mm -hmm. are high. Like the problems that, that face the city of Toronto, which I'm very mindful, you know, this is a national program, but Toronto is this country's biggest city, are, uh, you know, punctuate, punctuate, I think, themes we see across the country, right? Affordable housing is a huge one. Lack of access to transportation, just a, high, a really high cost mm -hmm. of living. She set the bar very high, but like Tom points out, she has a shortened mandate to kind of meet those expectations. Do you anticipate that will be difficult or that she uh, has set herself up for success? I think she set herself up to success. I think she's coming in at like the perfect time for her, quite frankly, because in the fall, we're going to see the Trudeau government really focus on affordable housing and housing of all sorts. We know that the government here in Ontario already is trying to focus on making sure they build more houses. There's going to be such an effort to try to deal with the gap we have in the number of houses versus the number of people. She's just going to be the beneficiary of all this federal and, and uh, provincial money that's going to flow in. And I think politically, it's a win for Justin Trudeau and the Liberals because now he's going to be able to plow all the money into the 416-9005 area, and he's going to go after those NDP votes because he's cooperating with an NDP mayor. And I think that's just, it's, it's fantastic for everybody but my people. <laughs> Strategically, that's an interesting point, Brian, because I just had uh, the leader of the NDP, Jagmeet Singh, on the program, who took a different view of what her win, particularly in downtown ridings that have federally gone liberal in the last three elections, were, and he kind of thought, oh, this might be good news for us. Maybe we have a, a better in now. Uh, what do you think of that? I think you're on mute, Brian. We there we go. We well, almost I, made Tom, it through an entire right, season without one of those. <laughs> I had, yeah, I had to wait for the last one. As Tom rightfully pointed out, I think progressives uh, lined up around her and, and supported her, and it wasn't just NDP voters. But also, you have to point out the fact that when it comes to municipal elections, 37% got her uh, the got her the win. So, so obviously, it's not uh, not necessarily a uh, sort of full backing of, of a political party supporters in the city. But look, it, it definitely is something that Jagmeet Singh can point to and say, hey, this is somebody that has the type of policies that I want to enact in the country and they just won the largest city. But you also want to be careful. I mean, uh, to Tom's point, uh, she she may do a great job, hardworking. To Lisa's point, she she set herself up for success. Uh, okay, but you never know how it's going to go. So you also want to be a little bit careful about saying this is this is how I would be if I ran the country. Uh, in, in Singh's position, you always want to be careful to hit yourself to somebody when they're sort of, you know, very much in their honeymoon phase, uh, given that it was she was she's still the mayor-elect. So, so that would be one thing I would caution. And the only thing about uh, Ford and, and, and Chow's relationship, I mean, no surprise to me. I, I had the chance to have my premiership uh, overlap with Premier Ford just for a few months. I sat around the table with him. I got a chance to know him. And I can tell you that there were conservatives around the table. There were liberals. And he treated everybody the same. He's, uh, you know, he how good of a premier he is is debatable sure but at the end of the day i can tell you that he's nice with everybody and yeah he, he knows politics and they and, and the ford family are you know pretty good at politics uh, but he also knows people and he wants to work to get things done for the city which will be good for the province so i'm really not surprised to your point though it was a pretty quick uh, quick pivot uh, but still not surprised that he would uh, take that tack okay i got to make a quick pivot to a commercial break the front bench